Thanks for tuning in to this update on the winter weather outlook for 2016 and the state of El Nino. This information is provided from the NOAA, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration Climate Prediction Center. Hope you enjoy the video and find it informative. What is the pattern we're seeing right now bringing all this warm weather? Well, you can see here high pressure is centered over the region. This is in the upper levels of the atmosphere, up where airplanes fly. This is also the area where the storm track follows. And you can see here storms are lined up across the Pacific, but they are not moving into California because on any given storm track, there's always an area of very cold air and storminess in an area of very warm air air that is sinking and warming and compressing and that's the area we happen to be in right now bringing all this warm weather. What does it look like on satellite? We can look on satellite and see the individual storms and the water vapor and the same thing shows up the yellow line is the storm track and all the brown air is the warm sinking air that's over our region right now but nonetheless there are significant storms piling up in the Pacific Ocean. Most of this activity in a normal jet stream will move west to east. Now let's contrast the image I just showed to the stormy pattern we had in early January. You can see high pressure is still there. It shifted to the north. This allows the door to open up for storms to move south of it. And that big long blue line is the powerful Pacific jet stream which gets enhanced during El Nino conditions, but it exists out in the Pacific every year. The warm temperatures we're seeing this week in the 80s, let's see how they compare to record highs. So for Monday and Tuesday, a lot of our coastal and valley locations, record highs range from around 80 to 90 degrees. For our mountains in the 60s and 70s and deserts in the 90s. Now also take a look at some of our hottest temperatures ever recorded in February. You can see those on the far right and those are in the 90s for the coastal and valley locations. Some of those years were in El Nino years, such as 1995. How are we doing precipitation so far across our region? Well, you can see in far Southern California, most of San Diego County is normal or above normal. But when you go further north in Riverside, Western Riverside County, and especially Orange County and the LA Basin, those areas are only about 50 to 60% of normal. Most of California is doing fairly good at normal or above normal, such as the Sierra Nevada and some of the valley and coastal areas as shown here in the green and blue shading. Here's a zoomed up view of our region. You can see the LA Basin in Orange County very dry compared to normal. Around 50 to 60 percent are normal. And then you can see down in the San Diego region, we're actually with the storms we had in January doing quite well with a good portion of the county and our mountain areas above normal in the green and blue shading. This is since October 1st all the way to date. All right, some of the precipitation totals that we've seen so far and then how they compare to what we saw in some big El Nino years of 82, 83, 97, 98. Take a look at your favorite location. I'll focus on San Diego here. You can see that we've had just over six inches of rain and then in the El Nino years of 82, 83, 97, 98, we actually didn't have as much. Uh, but then things really unloaded in February and March of those years and even continued into April. Take a look at this table to see what's closest to your location. All three of these stations have over 100 years of data in their records. I did a little case study on Laguna Beach, for example. So in Orange County, Laguna Beach has received only three and a half inches of rain this water year since October 1st. And the normal for October through April is 11 and a half inches. Now looking at just two past strong El Nino years, like we saw on the prior screen, you can see that we really unloaded between February and April in terms of getting rainfall. And the important thing to note here is the not to compare the seasons and put it into a forecast because this is only an analog or something that happened in the past but to show the potential of rainfall in our region, especially in El Nino years, can be significant even in late February, March, and April. All right, what about our mountain locations? Some of our mountain locations are actually running above normal, like Idlewild and the Big Bear region. Now, regions uh, in our deserts are running just about normal. 
So in some parts of Southern California, especially in parts of Riverside and San Diego County, we've seen quite a bit of precipitation so far this year, but we still have a good portion, about two months of the winter to go. Where is El Nino? Did it disappear? Well, this is the latest image of the ocean temperatures, and El Nino is definitely not gone. A massive area of above normal temperatures along the equator. You can see the rest of the Pacific is also quite warm. Uh, near Hawaii and the northern Pacific large area of warmth that warmth can fuel the storms that do make it across the Pacific like we showed in the earlier diagrams that El Nino zone considering how strong it still is it can have lingering impacts all the way through the spring some of our wettest months have been in March and February as shown here March of 91 was very wet March of 83 what I want you to focus on here is not the actual numbers and equating it to a forecast for March 2016, but I want to show that the potential, especially in El Nino years, that March can be a very, very wet month, and we have to be careful before we prematurely give up on the winter given how strong this El Nino is. The key word is how strong it is and how much potential there is in the Pacific still. Typically, as shown here, you can see February and March are very wet and strong El Nino years, not all of them, and that wetness typically continues all the way into April. In fact, some of the marches historically during El Nino years are some of the wettest months we've seen on record, like you saw in the prior table. All right, the current El Nino, here's the latest snapshot. It is still a strong El Nino, and we measure it by sea surface temperatures and how much they depart from normal over about a 30 year normal of averages and when you change water temperature more than a couple degrees you are significantly changing the atmosphere and also the local water conditions this is an area at least the size of the united states and a large area near the equator that can significantly affect our jet stream and enhance our jet stream not making new storms but bringing more powerful storms across the Pacific a better opportunity for those storms of all types and sizes to reach Southern California that's the zone we're talking about for ocean temperatures in the El Nino area the water is very deep and warm as shown here the latest image in late January shows that it's still a considerable depth of warm water all that cold water sitting in the far western Pacific, that's what's going to replace this El Nino, but that's for next year. The El Nino area actually warmed up over the past week. We're back to 2.6 Celsius, which is a very large number. That value, as you've seen on the diagram here, has reached 3.1 Celsius. And right now we're looking at the strongest El Nino on record, and it is uh, right on track with 97.98 in terms of the tropical ocean temperatures. All right, here's the part you're most likely interested in is when is it going to rain again, given how warm the temperatures are this week of February. Well, the Climate Prediction Center produces long-range outlooks and continues to indicate that late February, the last week of February and early March, should be a wet weather pattern, a return to storms, because the high pressure shifts up into western Canada, as shown in this map. And the probability is greatest for wetter conditions than normal for really a good portion of California along the coast and down into the deserts. This is for the period February 20th through March 4th. Now we also run computer models across the globe and we looked at these every single day over the past few months and we can see that the blue area is where the probability is highest for above normal rainfall in the month of March. That's most of California shown up and that's been showing up on every forecast for the past week or so. On the right hand side is also a prediction of returning storms in the southern part of the jet stream in late February and then the jet stream consolidates and takes aim right on the heart of California as shown here with a high probability of above normal. Now, of course, this is a weather forecast several weeks out in advance, but this is the latest tools we have to look at for long-range prediction. This is from the climate forecast system of NOAA. The official outlook that was issued a couple weeks ago that goes all the way through the spring, April, also is consistent showing the better probability of above normal being Southern California and Central. With the warmth continued across the northern areas, now it's important to note that it will rain in Seattle, 
But what this is showing is compared to normal, the wetter conditions will be in Southern and Central California. And even though it does rain up in the Pacific Northwest, it is expected to be below normal between February and April. Important to note the difference. Here's a summary of El Nino that we provide every week. And the bottom line is El Nino is at a magnitude comparable to 97.98. It has not gone away. The potential exists for storms in late February and March as well as into April. El Nino doesn't mean we're going to get historical storms or massive flooding, but it does mean the potential and opportunity for Pacific storms to move in is substantially higher, especially uh, in the last part of the winter and early spring. As we're seeing this week, and we've stated all along, El Nino can also bring Santa Ana winds and warm conditions. Typically those peak right in the middle of the winter uh, between December and February. And also it's important to note that in terms of making improvement on the drought, we have a long ways to go. And so far across the region, most of the area is still running below normal in Southern California for the exception of San Diego County and some of our mountain regions.